Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So today I got a fun and random episode for you guys this Friday because it's been over five years since I talked about or showed IMSA racing on the 3DO M2 on the channel. Because I'm very shortly going to be showing some of my 3DO M2 hardware out in public for gamers to play, I figured it'd be a good thing to test it because honestly, believe it or not, I don't turn these things on every single week. Before you get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But obviously, I started my channel on the 3DO M2 because it's been my collecting hobby for the longest time and honestly unless we find something new we didn't know about I'm pretty much done collecting 3DO M2 software because I think I have pretty much everything ever to exist but if you don't know what IMSA Racing is it was one of the marquee titles in development for the 3DO M2 the lead designer Ed Rotberg was in charge of this project and this was supposed to be one of the showcases of what the 3DO M2 hardware could do and luckily via preservation and developers having copies of this game it was made of available back in the 2010s for anyone who has the hardware to play. Obviously that is a very limited audience. But it's such a fun game to experience and it's so fun that we have this via preservation and original hardware. As we take a look at the main menu here, you're going to see a lot of fun that can be uncovered if you're actually able to check this out. If we go into game options and scroll all the way down into game controls, you're going to get a peek of what the retail 3DO M2 controller would have been. Definitely has very big Nintendo 64 vibes. It would have had an analog stick in the middle as well is a rotational wheel around that d-pad unfortunately there's only one in existence and i don't have it as of yet the second reason i'm doing this is because i figured it'd be fun to have 4k captures of some 3do m2 content on youtube i will upload at a later date the entire playthrough of this game in 4k so they'll be there for preservation and as we race around the track and I crash into everything, this is just a very pretty game. Imagine getting this in late 1996, early 1997. It can absolutely outdo anything the Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, or PlayStation 1 would have been capable of back then. The fog here, the textures, the track, and the vibes have a very similar Atari thing going on. Interestingly, Ed Rotberg used to work for Atari, so I feel like this art style definitely has some Atari hallmarks all over the screen, but leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. And if you're wondering why I am crashing into stuff on some courses, that is because this game, while very near to final, is not 100% done. Some of the handling can be a little bit touchy. This was really meant to use an analog stick or a steering wheel, and unfortunately, I do not know what steering wheel it works with. I did talk to Ed, and he told me he believed it was a Logitech that worked on DB9 on a computer, but he couldn't really remember what it was, so I'm still out there hunting for something that might be compatible. So if you see me crashing, it's just because it's very difficult. This is a sim game through and through, and while there is an arcade handling mode, it is still very Gran Turismo-esque. This is not an arcade racing game in any way, shape, or form, but it is still so much fun, and honestly, I probably played this game more than anyone else around, so I might exactly be the best person at IMA Racing in the world, but it's a very limited audience. I'm sure somebody could beat me if they practice for like 12 minutes. But I just love this course right here. Going around a downtown New Orleans, you get the football stadium, in the background you get all the palm trees in the distance this just looks absolutely so much fun and you get the models of the cars and everything else at the same time and this is running at a very good frame rate it really shows you the power of the 3do m2 and something that would have been a day one launch game so imagine what 3do m2 could have looked like in 1998 or 1999 had developers had 24 to 36 months of development time under their belt this is definitely not dreamcast era spec hardware but i do get some ferrari f350 challenge vibes going on here. I would say that this would definitely hold its own against the Dreamcast and if it did have a 36 month lead time I think Panasonic could have been very successful with the M2 but obviously we all know they got cold feet and didn't want to compete against Nintendo of all people. Nintendo 64 ending up taking the third spot in a three-man console race so it seems like Panasonic was very flawed in their thinking by canceling this hardware but at least it does exist and at least I can show this off to you. Now do be aware I'm not going to leave the cockpit view and that's because I'm using using a VGA cable to capture this, and when you do that, you can't use an analog controller like a flight stick with more buttons that actually get you out of the cockpit view. It's a little bit limited, but the hardware is just like that. And it's got a really strange soundtrack. I stripped out the sound effects so you could hear it. Enjoy.
some really interesting music there, and I just wanted to take out the engine noises and the screeching tires. That way you could hear the soundtrack a little bit better. And you'll see I did not perform very well here, so we go to a little video vignette showing that we had a bad race. And I will say that pretty much every track seems to have completely different handling characteristics, at least that's what I believe, because on some courses with the same car in the same settings, I am very good, and other courses with the exact same settings, I am absolutely terrible. Well, my favorite part is if you hit A here, you can do a track drive-through, but at least on Suzuki, you get this place holder art of an alien bobbing his head where it says placeholder. Not sure where the asset came from, but if you could spot it and you know where it is, leave me a comment down below. But let's move on to another race here. There are four courses in the game, and that apparently was what was planned, because I have talked to other people that have worked on this game. And when you start a race, you get this incredible interactive display of the vehicle with all these pseudo real-time lighting effects over it. It is just such a fun look, and it shows the power of what could be done. But as we move into the next track here, I just love the fact that this is actually something that you can play. I know you have to have rare hardware, and I am one of the few people that does have it, but it's so great that this is not lost to time, that you can actually experience this, and at least through YouTube, I can now show you a review of this game in 4K, and hopefully soon I'll be able to exhibit this hardware more places, because I do want more of you to play it. As I go through this track here, this is one of the tracks where the handling is relatively decent. I'm trying to use similar vehicles and similar settings to see how they control, but there are so many variables you can set on your handling, on your engine, on the spoiler, on the brakes, on the transmission. This is a full sim game, so there might be some magic combination for every single track. We're just always poking at it to see what we can do. But again, I just love the look of this game. It hues very close to real life. It's got nice textures, it's got a ton of polygons, you have that rear view mirror that seems to be having some sort of rendering issue. It doesn't see everything, but it sees just enough to give you that rear view view and really nice high quality textures on pretty much all of the billboards on the side of the track. And this was all running in 1996. Back in the day, in that same year, you had PlayStation 1, you had Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64 was kind of in existence, but not really, and you had the 3DO M2. This was running in offices in California, and it would have been mind-blowing if this actually came out. It is still my number one disappointment as far as retro gaming is concerned. I would have loved to live in a timeline in which the 3DO M2 actually saw release, and you could go to a retro game store and buy used hardware and copies of this game. At least it still exists, though. It's better than not having any of this. And again, if you want to see some of my other earliest 3DO M2 content redone in 4K, just leave me a comment down below because I do want to preserve as much of this as possible for the future because they're not making any more hardware and I'm sure they will come a day in which all of this hardware is very temperamental and hard to run. But this is why I got into the 3DO M2 in the first place. I remember seeing previews of IMSA Racing in magazines, along with Iron Blood and M2 for the 3DO M2. It just looked so incredible, and I wanted to own this hardware for my home. I put $5 down on a pre-order at EB Games back in the day, and I never got to use it. I don't know what I transferred that $5 to, probably some Nintendo 64 game, but I much would have rather had my 3DO M2 hardware back then, but at least I get to have it now. And as we move on to the first track again on the third lap, I am actually in first place. Winning a race in IMSA Racing is not easy whatsoever. You have to be perfect on pretty much every single line. The AI on the cars, at least on this track, is very brutal. But if you're careful, if you control it well, if you do all your settings exactly as they need to be, and you run a clean race, it is possible to grab a first. But if I could find a steering wheel that would work with the 3DO M2 hardware, I think I could do it better. So if you know of any Logitech DB9 controllers out there in the world that have pedals as well as a wheel across that DB9, port, leave me a comment down below because honestly in my hunt I've never been able to find anything that seems to be what Ed Rotberg was talking about. He told me in the offices he believed it was a Logitech wheel that they had gotten from a PC store and they had basically plugged it into the back of the 3DO M2 and used that for development. So there's something out there, maybe on a shelf somewhere, maybe in somebody's garage that could work with this game. But at least on this one course, I was able to pull a first place finish, and trust me, that's exceedingly hard to do on IMSA Racing as it currently stands. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to test this hardware, and I figured a 4K capture of one of the most famous games for a console that never existed would be fun to have. Sure, that'll upload a long play later on down the line, but I am done. I got first, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.